Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it's time for episode 5 of our Pokemon Stadium 2 playthrough. If you follow along the episodes, you see in the last episode, we did get into further into the Gym Leader Castle. And at one point, let's take a quick look at what's going on in here. We defeated Jasmine. Team Rocket decided to show up and cause us some trouble. So, I was thinking about this. How do I want to deal with Team Rocket? What I would like to do is use the team that we battled against Team Rocket with back in Silver and bring them here. I got them all up to level 50 and I'm going to do a little bit of a tweak because on the team that we were using at the end of the Team Rocket side story when we tried to rescue the radio tower from them, the uh, one of the team members was Machamp. Now he's one of our active members on the team going through against the gym leader so I did swap out Machamp from that Team Rocket versus Team for another Pokemon. The Pokemon that was destroyed by a Weezing's explosion. And I'll explain that as we get to it. But let's take a look at the team I've prepared as we take on two Rocket Grunts and two Rocket Executives. We have a decent Team Rocket showdown going on today in Stadium 2. And let's choose the team from, of course, my game card. We've got Keaton, the level 50 Heracross. They're all level 50. He has Horn Attack, Endure, Rock Smash, and Leer, and he's holding the Bright Powder, just in case he can dodge some hits with that. We've also got Bullwinkle, he's got Headbutt, Rest, Iron Tail, and Horn Drill, and if I didn't mention, he's a Tauros. And he has the Paralyzed Cure Berry. Now, in the last episode of Pokemon Silver, I did pick up a Mint Berry from in Pallet, or not Pallet Town, Pewter City, or so I thought. But it must have been that the pack was full, and I didn't notice that because I do not have a Mint Berry accessible. I wanted to use the Mint Berry to make use of the Rest Attack, but since we don't have that, I could give him a basic mint berry from the in-game items here but i decided you know what let's just go with paralyzed cure if he has to rest he has to rest i can switch him out if necessary so he is our second choice stinger at level 50 of course our b drill with twin needle endure poison sting and swift i didn't yet go back to the lake of rage to pick up the sludge bomb tm but if you can be rest assured if i had he'd be having sludge bomb instead of poison sting but we'll probably take care of that before we finish up in uh, silver so he's got the focus band which might save him from a ko it's a one in something chance that he won't get knocked out if he's holding that. He'll go down to 1 HP, which would be pretty good. He also has Endure in case he needs to make use of that as well. Next we have Gary. He is the one that's replacing Machamp. Now, Gary is the one that was obliterated by Weezing's Explosion. Our highest defense at the time, I think, but he still couldn't take it. But he is back for revenge against Team Rocket. I did do some in-between episode stuff to get rid of a couple of the HMs that he had. I got rid of Surf. I got rid of Whirlpool. He doesn't need those because he has Waterfall. He's also got Takedown, and I also taught him Rain Dance to power up the Waterfall. And Rock Smash, just for some type diversity. Plus, we could lower the physical defense. It's not going to help Waterfall, of course, but it could help power power up takedown and he's holding king's rock to possibly cause some flinching next we have marowak our marowak he has bone club submission false swipe and i taught him thunder punch instead of the rage attack that he had his special attack is only 69 that's about less not less than that, a little more than half of what his physical attack is however it is going to be useful in gen 4 when eventually thunder punch becomes a physical type attack so therefore i figure let's teach it to him now give him some type diversity if you know if it's going to help him out or not we'll have to see but if he's up against a flying type at least he has something that would be good if not just good super effective he's holding quick claw to possibly get him to outspeed because the speed's only 70. And the final Pokemon is the Brain, our Hypno. He has Dream Eater, Seismic Toss, Hypnosis, and I taught him Nightmare from TM. Now, it's all going to rely on getting things to sleep with Hypnosis, because we can either Dream Eater or Nightmare at that point. And just for some reliable 50 damage on the opponent, we have Seismic Toss, and the Brain is holding Leftovers for Heal Up between turns. Let's get this battle against Team Rocket underway. This is time for Revenge against Team Rocket, although we didn't really need Revenge. We only lost one Pokemon to them. Do you know where you are? I am in Gym Leader Castle versus a lot of rock types. These are all Exploders. So, that being the case, we have two Pokemon with Endure. What are they likely to lead with? Well, I'm going to bring Keaton and Stinger for sure. Let's lead with Keaton. Go with Stinger as well. And... Probably our most defensive Pokemon, I'm thinking. Let's bring Marowak. We don't have a rock type, unfortunately. We could have brought Kabutops, but I wasn't anticipating explosions. Although, let's find out. So, Keaton is leading off. Now, I could have brought Kabutops. I was not expecting my first opponent to be nothing but explosions. So, hopefully, we're going to be able to pull through as a Graveler comes out first. Would they go for the explosion immediately? 
in case, I'm going to endure first of all. Let's see what they're going to go for. I could, of course, switch into... Hey, I didn't bring Gary, but I could have switched into Gary. Yep, there goes the explosion. And the Bright Powder pulls through! Alright, first one is down. Just how I planned it. Really? Because that wasn't exactly how I planned it, it just kind of happened. So next opponent is a Pineco. I think we could survive an explosion from this. I'm going to... Let's just go Horn Attack. No, let's go Leer, just to lower the defense. And see if the explosion or self-destruct, whatever it goes for, is going to be enough for Keaton. Because... Worst case scenario, I can go into Stinger next and endure that. Explosion, that's the most powerful move, but Pineco has kind of bad attack. No, oh, Keaton doesn't handle that, so down he goes. However, no, I'm not mad. I've got two Pokemon, you've got one. If you're going to blow up on your last one... Now, wait a minute. Would the game let them explode on their final Pokemon? Because it is in the rules that you lose if you use Explosion with your last one. Just in case, let's bring Stinger in. We can't endure... What if we see the Electrode? Well, we see Coffin, so there's nothing we can do super effective against that. We have Swift at least, but Stinger is going to have to endure for the first part, just to see what we can do against this. So Cough Act 1. We're going to, as I say, endure. Wait and see what happens. Please blow yourself up. I want to get past you as fast as possible. No, they go Sludge, so they probably will not go for Explosion. Do we want to whittle this thing down with Singer first? No, you know what? In case they try Explosion, I'm going to bring Marowak in now. He resists the Poison Stab, and I have the option to bring Stinger in if Marowak does fall. I can endure whatever possible Explosion they might try to go for then. If the game lets them do that. But Marowak is here for some revenge. Revenge against... well, he lost to the Elite Four. So it's not really revenge against Team Rocket. Hardly any damage. Our defense handles that. We can go for a Bone Club. And it's, there's no levitate ability, of course, abilities don't happen until Gen 3, so super effective critical hit. The coughing falls. Alright, so we only lost Keaton, and fortunately, I might have said this at the beginning of Stadium 2's playthrough, but this is not a Nuzlocke, so I can lose a Pokemon. Blithering fool! Me or coughing? But I don't have to worry about losing Pokemon because they are back in the next battle. Of course, these are all Pokemon that were knocked out during the Silver playthrough. And they have recovered just long enough to get into Stadium 2, so we're good there. First Rocket Grunt is down, of course that was the easy one. Who in the world are you? We are Star Fox! I mean, I'm Professor Chaz. Let's continue with our second Grunt of Team Rocket. I like this though, I completely forgot that Team Rocket appears in the Gym Leader Castle. I like it, it mixes up the storyline a little bit. Are you listening? I'm going to rub you in and become an executive. Not with that team. Although they could be a little bit scary. So then... Who would be our best way to go with this? Huh. Bullwinkle is good with some fast speed plus the headbutt for possible flinching. He could be good. I could bring Marowak. Well, what can you do? Thunder Punch on the Zubat and the Murkrow. Bone Club for the Houndour. Not much more we can do there. But I'm going to bring Marowak anyway. He has good defense. In fact, I don't want to lead with him. I want to lead with Bullwinkle and Marowak. And should I bring Gary? Wouldn't be super effective against a lot of these things, but he's got some good power behind him. Let's bring Gary into battle. He's itching for revenge against Team Rocket. Of course. He'll respond in force. Now, of course, Gary would have preferred to get revenge against the exploding team because, of course, he was exploded on. But that's all right. We'll let the rest of the team handle that one as let's go for the headbutt. And if okay. necessary, I do have Bullwinkle's horn drill to fall back on. So let's land that headbutt. Possible flinch. Massive damage. And there is the flinch. There was a reason I taught you headbutt, Bullwinkle. And this is it right here. Let's drop the Murkrow with one more headbutt. That should get the KO. That did 74. And a critical hit. If that wasn't going to get the KO regardless, then the critical hit cinched it for us. Down goes their first Pokemon. I am not joking at all, ma'am. Next Pokemon in. I like this. I, I like the fact that now that I'm not being stubborn like I was back in Stadium 1, and I'm allowing myself to use other Pokemon, I'm having fun with Gym Leader Castle. 
And as I said, the reason I was kind of being not, not stubborn so much, but didn't want to use too many different Pokemon back then was because I didn't want to train them all to level 50 to prepare them and then have them over leveled getting into silver. Because I had the plan from the start to keep my Pokemon at relatively low levels and bring them back in the process that, you know, if my current team hits their level, my older ones can come back in. So all that being said... Since my Pokemon are all pretty high leveled as it is, getting them to level 50 as a side copy of the game is not a big issue. Look at the criticals! Did I give him the King's Rock? I think I gave, yeah. I think I gave him the King's Rock because Gary I gave the... Uh, where did I give Gary? I can't recall. No, I gave Paralyzed Cure to Bullwinkle. He's just landing these criticals on his own. Awesome! It's, I don't think criticals are based on speed stat in Gen 2 either. So it's just Bullwinkle's natural power. One more headbutt will bring this down as it flinches. Look at this. Bullwinkle single-handedly, or single-hoofedly, took down this grunt. You ain't becoming no executive anytime soon, miss. Sorry to say. Boom! And another critical! Does headbutt have a high chance to critical hit? I don't think so. It just is Bullwinkle doing his thing. So, with not a lost Pokemon at all, we take down that grunt. Now then, we're getting to the executives, though. We're going to have probably, uh, and if not fully evolved, then higher evolved Pokemon. Maybe I should go back home. Yeah, maybe you should. Alright, but as I say, the executives are up next. Let's see how well we do. It is just Team Rocket, though. Got to keep that in mind. Your trip ends here. I'm going to take you down. A better team, I will say that. Now then. We see a couple weaknesses to ground and three weaknesses to fighting. Marowak is the best choice in that case. I will lead with him. To resist the Vile Plume's attacks, Stinger is the best bet. And he can get some good damage off on that Sneasel as well with Twin Needle. So Stinger comes in next. And to wrap things up, I think I'd probably just go with Bullwinkle for some more possible flinching. That's going to be the team. Now, if we see the Vile Plume as the lead, we're going to switch immediately into Stinger, of course. He can resist those grass attacks quite nicely. Double resistance, plus the decent special offense of a Beedrill. He's the best bet there. But Marowak can handle pretty much anything else except Sneasel. Muck, we can deal with that. We're going to go ahead and fire off the Bone Club. Are you going to switch out by any chance? Nope. You stole my Quick Claw! I was Thief! Alright, that's it. Boom! Oh, not as much damage as I would have liked. But now, with the Quick Claw, they might outspeed us, even though we just saw they already do. Fire Blast? Alright, let's see what you got. Not bad, but as much as my Bone Club did. Problem is, Bone Club has a chance to miss. Not this time, though. So then... We're going to go one more Bone Club. I would try Thunder Punch, but I don't think I'd get enough damage off for the KO. Fire Blast is less accurate, I believe, than Bone Club, so they might miss this. Nope, they get it. But can we land the Bone Club? There we go, alright. Muck, <laughs> Muck Ep is down. Marowak is still in there. We're going to probably see the Vile Plume or the Sneasel at this point. So that being the case... We're going to probably switch out into... No, Lickitung. We could go Submission against this. I'm going to do that. We'll go Submission. Now, recoil might bring us down, unfortunately. Almost half damage. All right, so... Probably Bullwinkle is best to come in next to go for some flinching with the headbutt. Oh, frustration. Yeah, Stinger can't handle that. It's a physical type attack, plus it is stab on a Lickitung, so... Bullwinkle is our best way to go. Let's go ahead, Bullwinkle. Go for those massive headbutt flinches, criticals that you've been getting. Yeah, how many criticals and flinches was that? I lost count. That was quite a decent amount. So, Tauros come flying in with those headbutts. And if Sneasel comes in next, I can go for the super effective Iron Tail, but I think headbutt's still the way to go. Yeah, one more would get the KO, I think. And you're going to steal my Paralyzed Cure Berry. Ew. Critical steal. Critical thief. And that was hardly any damage to worry about. All right, let's do this. I think one more gets the KO at this point. Wait for it. Oh, come on. Now, you got to flinch, though. 
Blizzard? What not? Fair enough, I guess. Let's go ahead and finish up and see what comes in next. Now, I could rest and heal back up, but since I don't have that mint berry, I kind of don't want to spend the time recovering, unless it's something that can't really hurt us. Let's see what comes in. But the Lickitung Falls. I like how we're battling on this suspension, not suspension bridge, but like a, a bridge suspended over the uh, air here, too. It gives it a real dramatic effect, and there's a Team Rocket in the back I didn't even mention. Eradicate, you might be faster than us. You are fast, but are you fast enough to outspeed our battle train, Bullwinkle? You are not. Let's go ahead and headbutt. That's all? And frustration? Ooh, that'll hurt. We hung in there, though. Now, you might have quick attack. In fact, I'm surprised if you don't at this point. I'm surprised. Now, can we flinch it out? Or a critical? I think he used all his good luck in the last fight. Yeah, frustration brings us down. But, I believe, is Stinger even faster than Bullwinkle? I want to find out. I'm just curious. I mean, it doesn't really matter. we got to go into the Stinger anyway. But let's just check the speed stats here. Stinger is... doesn't say. Let's go into Stinger. And just see if in battle he outspeeds this Raticate... Or... Rat... Rat... Raticep. Raticap, I guess. Anyway, whatever. We're going to go Twin Needle Attack. Don't steal my... Focus band. In fact, don't. You actually might survive this now. And you are faster than us. Down you go. All right. No focus band for you, Raticap. What? No. Huh, yes. So we got time for at least one more battle here. And with Team Rocket being vanquished, now I'm jumping the gun here. I might not beat them right away. But if I do defeat them here, I'm going to check out the Earl's Pokemon Academy and show you some more stuff in there just to round out the episode. Well, isn't that a bummer? Very much so. One more executive left to go against Team Rocket. Let's do this. What do you got for me? Now, of course, this is going to be the toughest one of them all. I have received reports that your skills are not insignificant. You could have just said, you're good. Ooh, Wobbuffet. Now, we got a plan for Wobbuffet. But first of all thinking Marowak might not be bad. I will lead with him. And I'm going to bring the brain to deal with Wobbuffet. I can put that thing to sleep and then go with the uh, Nightmare Attack. As for the remainder of the team, we want something to deal with that Victory Belt. Well, we could Hypnosis and Dream Eater that, but I'm thinking I might just go Bullwinkle again. He can headbutt a lot of these things. Let's do it. Bullwinkle is sort of our go-to guy at this point. Did I even use Gary? I never used Gary yet to take on Team Rocket. Oh, well. I am happy to get his moveset back to something more useful as we get him into future generations, of course, because uh, Water Pool, Water Pool, <laughs> Whirlpool, Waterfall, and Surf, not really that good as a combo. So, if you have Sunny Day, you might have Solar Beam. Let's see what happens here. We're just going to switch out. No, you're charging up a Solar Beam. All right. I should have brought Stinger. But we could get a KO here. No KO, but we see, of course, the Houndoom is faster. Our best specially defensive Pokemon is the Brain, but he is Psychic-type. Let's go Bullwinkle. We should be faster than the Houndoom, the Doom map, and go for... <laughs> it's like something on your cell phone these days. It's a Doom map. So let's go ahead and go for a headbutt as we survive the Solar Beam. I'm calling it right now. We're not falling to no Solar Beam from a Houndoom. Although they are kind of power. But it's not Stab. And Bullwinkle. Is your special defense okay? Not as okay as I would have liked. But this does give us a chance to go back into Marowak and go with a powerful Bone Club, which we know will get the KO. And you got to spend one turn charging that Solar Beam Doom map. Is it going to be enough time? Now, basically, is it going to be enough time for you to dodge a Bone Club? I don't think it is. But, again, Bone Club is not fully accurate. I was going to say, we went first this time? Oh, wait, yeah, the Quick Claw. Excellent. All right. Now, I could have taught Earthquake to Marowak instead for full accuracy plus more power. But, to me, it just doesn't feel right to have a Marowak without a Bone-type attack. That's why even in the current generation of Gen 6, you'll see my Marowak uses Bone Meringue as opposed to, like, Earthquake or whatever. So this might have Giga Drain. 
Hmm, I'm gonna leave Marowak in. We did teach him Thunder Punch for just such an occasion. We could get a Paralysis. I believe it's a 1 in 10 chance, and the Quick Claw activates again, and we do get the Paralysis! Alright. Alright, we're pulling through. Marowak is doing this. Now, Giga Drain would be a problem. But I'm gonna go with another Thunder Punch. If they do Giga Drain, they're gonna heal back a lot of HP. But I'm thinking, if we can bring... Yikes! If I can bring the Brain in, which I'm gonna have to do right now. But once he comes in, we can go for a Seismic Toss, which will now get the KO, because it has less than 50 HP. Let's go, Brain. You can deal with this. You're gonna outspeed thanks to the Paralysis on the Golbap. These names are crazy, aren't they? Now, once we get into the Pokemon Coliseum games, you're gonna see some even crazier names than this. You know, I've said before, to me, it, there's the Giga Drain, but to me it feels like they just took random letters from the alphabet and put a name together using them. You'll see though. And exactly 50 HP, nice. We can get the KO, and there's those leftovers recovery. Let a Seismic Toss away. Of course, we can't put this thing to sleep for the Dream Eater or the Nightmare, so this is the way to go. I'm glad I didn't remove Seismic Toss off your brain. Down goes the Golbat. Now, if we see the Wobbuffet, I, I want to see the Wobbuffet. I want to be able to use the tactics of Hypnosis. Come on, do this. Nope, Mistreva. So I can still go ahead and Hypnosis this, though. Ghost is super effective on me, and they do have Shadow Ball, I'm sure. But our best way to go is put this to sleep. We can, of course, Seismic Toss this. So our only hope is to put it to sleep and go with the Recovery of Dream Eater or the Nightmare. Ooh, that's painful. Now, the Hypnosis has to land, though, is the problem. So then... There we go. All right. No berry to recover. That's great. Well, it's going to come down to Marowak. Let's just hope the Shadow Ball misses. Of course, it's not going to. But there we go, so we just lose the brain here. With a critical hit. Unnecessary. Calm yourself down, Ms. Drevis. But, Marowak, can you pick up the KO? This is looking a little bit scary, a little bit worrisome. If we could go first with a Quick Claw and flinch with the Bone Club, that might be what we need to happen to pull through here. Nothing else can really do anything. We can paralyze with Thunder Punch, but we gotta try for the damage. Curse. So you're gonna cut your HP in half. Oh! Did you see that? Look how creepy that thing is. Come on. Flinch it! Well, not flinch it, but... If the Quick Claw activates and we can pull through... Get away from me, you little Knight's Monster! Come on, Quick Claw! Come on, Quick Claw! Come on, Quick Claw! Pain Split! Come on, don't do this! Man, they're gonna beat me! Critical! Or miss. Now... We need a Critical! We need a Quick Claw Critical! Come on, come on! You can do this! Never you mind. So we lose our first attempt against this, not gym leader, but this first Team Rocket member. Let's go ahead and end this off. I'm going to skip right back to the final hit of this battle, just so you can see the ending of it. But I'd like to say good game to my opponent, but no. Not a good game. Not a good game at all. Curse you, Mr. Evis. Actually, yes, curse you, because you cursed yourself. You may have the qualities to become an executive. Well, no thank you. But let's come right back as I take on the Team Rocket Executive once again. Alright, let's go with round two versus this Rocket Executive, see if we can do better this time. I'm going to lead Bullwinkle this time, go for all those critical flinching headbutts against a non-ghost type being Houndoom. Alright, I was expecting Mr. Revis to appear out of nowhere, but I don't think your defense is terribly good, Houndoom. Let's go ahead and go for that headbutt. See how much damage we can get off possible critical, possible flinch. I'm not going to hope for either, but I'll accept whatever I want to give me. Or neither. But we see it as a three-hit KO. And a sunny day, so your solar beam is going to fire off every turn now. Plus, your fire attacks are just basically boosted 1.5 times. So will Bullwinkle be able to pull through this? I don't know, but let's find out together. Land it. No critical. We get a flinch. We actually do. I'm kind of surprised. I was going to say, in my second attempt going through all the Team Rocket members, the game seems to be starting to pull this little strategy of, you know what, we're going to increase the percentages on our side and hurt the complete or hurt the uh, component. Component? 
hurt the opponent, I was trying to say computer for some reason, and lower their percentages. By this I mean they were getting three turn detects and two turn protect. So two turn protect is not that hard to believe, but after a 50% chance of detect on a second turn and a 25% chance on the third turn, they still got it. And it's like, it's not unheard of, but it's very uncommon for a human player to get that. So the fact that a computer manages to pull it off is hard to accept. But we go for the Iron Tail. One of the reasons I did teach this to Bullwinkle is so that he can hurt ghost types. And you land that curse against yourself once more. Now you're going to Pain Split, of course. So we have only one more shot to land the Iron Tail. And here's where the percentages come down to is the computer going to allow things to happen. 75% accurate Iron Tail. Do we land it? If we don't, we're in trouble. I'll take it. So down goes the Mistrevious. I don't think the curse hurts me now that I've gotten a knockout on that turn. And I can switch out, of course. Nope, curse does not affect me. It is still in play on Bullwinkle, however. Now we gotta switch out. And we don't even get to see the Wobbuffet this time. Golbat is in. And the Sunlight fades. Who do I switch to? With the Sunlight down, I could go to Gary. But they're gonna confuse Ray. Let's go into the Brain first. I'm going to bring him in, see if we can get the Hypnosis and Dream Eater combo off, which might do the trick, but if not, I go to Gary and go for the Rain Dance and then try to flinch. Hang on, does Waterfall cause flinching in this generation? That might be something they added later on, but we're going to find out. Confuse Ray. I'm willing to let Brain fall at this point, because he does not outspeed the Golbat, so even if I was to pull him back and let somebody else fall, there is a possibility that the Golbat is still going to outspeed and confuse him regardless. And they go for a super effective bite attack, but I think your special attack is nothing compared to our special defense. Critical hit, though. Come on, you can land this. Do it, buddy. They do fall asleep. Excellent. We saw Mint Berry was on the Mistrevious already, so therefore the Golbat will not wake up immediately. Now, being confused, are we going to break through again or completely snap out? We break through, land the Dream Eater. That's going to do some massive damage. At least half, I'm sure. We almost set it up for a Seismic Toss KO, but not quite. We are back to full, though, with our Leftovers Recovery plus the Dream Eater. So one more Dream Eater should do the trick, unless it wakes up. Still snoozing. Now, can we break through the confusion? Not this time. I'm expecting the Golbat's going to wake up. And since we are not free of confusion yet they wouldn't go for confused right they might go bite again i'm gonna switch back to our fast bullwinkle and go for a headbutt ko i can go for horn drill too if i want to be really you know creative with my ideas but i think let's go reliable damage with the headbutt fully accurate and if it doesn't knock it out we could possibly pick up a flinch oh it stayed asleep we could have stayed in and gone for one more dream eater but regardless we are now in with bullwinkle headbutt away see if we can drop this goal bat and finish up the rocket executive down they go. All right, so on our second attempt, we do manage to pull through as we rub out the Team Rocket executive, and this should be where Team Rocket finally, in all the games, disbands and never affects us once again. Maybe. We win. Almost a perfect win there, too. It pains me to see your talent go to waste. It's not going to waste. It's going to wiping out Team Rocket. So, there we go. We have dealt with them. We're back on track to make it to Mahogany Gym with three Pokemon in here. The three trainers in here. We're going to wait and save that for the next episode because this has gone on long enough. We've dealt with Team Rocket. Thanks to that loss, I don't get to show off Earl's Pokemon Academy, but I might be able to do that in the next episode. In fact, I'll start the next episode with that, showing you off what the new information is that I accomplished by going through all the different challenges and such. But anyway... That being the case, feel free to leave a comment down below what you thought or what you thought of this episode, what you've been enjoying thus far in the playthrough, and what you might be looking forward to in the future of the Pokemon Stadium 2 playthrough. And what was I gonna say? Thanks for watching. <laughs> I forgot to mention that at the start of it. But yes, feel free to leave a comment and feel free to let me know if you would like to see any other Pokemon from my collection that I'm using in Pokemon Silver right now for future challenges. Because once we are done with Gym Leader Castle, we'll go into the Prime Cup and the Poke Cup in the main stadium attraction of this game. See if we can get some victories in there as well. And feel free to check out the playlist that's linked down in the description if you have missed an episode of Pokemon Stadium 2. It's all down there for you. Click that, you can get the full playlist, and click onto my channel for more playlists of other games like Pokemon Silver on the go right now. 
Wi-Fi battles, and Pokemon TCG, all sorts of Pokemon content if that is what you're interested in checking out. All that being said, Professor Chaz is signing off, and come on back tomorrow for another episode of Stadium 2 for the weekend. Until then, I'll catch you next time.